okay i think uh, it's a time to start the session so i welcome all of you for uh, wednesday sutta teaching session for some of you it is tuesday for us it is wednesday morning and uh, we are discussing certain suttas which is relevant to our practice and we are try to get some insights from these suttas so that we can connect with the teaching with our own practice and uh, as a result we are going through dhatu vibhanga sutta where buddha is explaining various aspects of so called person and so called individual and he is giving entirely different uh, explanations and this is quite relevant to our practice and so we are discussing this for several weeks now and actually today we have come to the last session of this sutta so first of all if i go through the summary of the sutta so venerable pukkusati gone forth on behalf of uh, aiming buddha the uh, even though he is not uh, seen the buddha in person and uh, only heard buddha's teaching through his good friend king bimbisara and actually uh, venerable pukkusati is far away from uh, uh, shravasti and he is actually in avanti and now he is coming towards the uh, shravasti to meet buddha in between he got late and uh, he had to stay at the potter's warehouse and while he is staying there buddha also understood that uh, when pukkusati is approaching him in order to meet him but he found that uh, he has a uh, short life span so and he is in a condition to receive the dhamma so buddha also come into the same place and got permission from uh, the potter as well as from venerable venerable pukkusati and now buddha also went to the same place venerable pukkusati is uh, with some uh, higher samatha concentration so he is enjoying those and he attained certain samadhi and buddha also understood that he is in a higher concentration sam- uh, samatha concentration and buddha also waited uh, while uh, venerable pukkusati emerged from that samadhi and then buddha asked from venerable pukkusati uh, from on behalf of whom that you have gone forth hmm? then venerable pukkusati mentioned that i have gone forth on behalf of gotama the buddha and then buddha asked whether you have seen him if you see him could you able to recognize him then venerable pukkusati replied that no i haven't seen him and i also don't be able to recognize him and here the beauty is that buddha didn't go to in a uh, uh, sort of uh, introduce him rather he immediately asked is it okay if i preach you some dhamma are you ready to listen then when will pukusati yes my friend uh, it's all right you can preach me dhamma so likewise he is uh, addressing the buddha as a friend avuso vad and then uh, he started to listen so now buddha is giving various deep dhamma more relevant to vipassana more relevant to the insight meditation and he is telling the first uh, the so called person consists of six elements earth element fire element water element air element space element and consciousness element so these are the six elements that so called person consists of and this explanation actually simplify the whole experience we typically think we are someone we i have this name i have these titles i have these designations this is my wealth this is my social status and these are my children these are my parents this is my wife this is my husband this is my country so likewise we have so much preconceived ideas we are so preoccupied and this is how we typically think really uh struggling with the conventional re- conventional Uh, stuff conceptual stuff so this is the typical way of uh, thinking now on to this buddha is telling even though that we have so much of uh, conceptual uh, ideas what is really available is nothing but six elements so this is in a way a uh, uh, <clears throat> huge simplification to our whole experience so if a yogi is able to recognize all these six elements understand these six elements that would be a Uh, opening of a different domain 
and then buddha goes on to explain that the so called person is six bases of contact i contact with the uh, sights ear with sounds nose with smells tongue with uh, tastes body with tactile sensations and the mind with uh, mental objects so this way also another simplification comes so this so called person is nothing but six contacts six bases of contact and then buddha says this so called person is 18 types of mental exploration when we see something through our eyes so we immediately start to look at more details expecting to be happy or else if if the sight is bringing up some kind of a sorrow kind of a uh, unhappiness still we may be looking in search of various details signs marks available there so still our mind get sorrow more and more unhappy still we are looking on the other hand on, uh, most of the time we are looking at certain things it neither brings any happiness no pain but some sort of a neutral feeling but still we are searching still we are sort of exploring that object so similarly we can apply the same situation to ears nose tongue body and mind so whenever the respective object comes to the mind to the to the to the respective uh, sense then uh, we start to explore it more and more and the ultimate result is we end up with some sort of a happy feeling or painful feeling or neutral feeling so therefore the whole experience with the says can be defined as a 18 types of mental exploration then would they get into the practitioner's approach where would the says this so called person is established on four foundations so these four foundations are different from the typical uh, foundations of uh, mindfulness satipatthana so these four foundations are entirely a different explanation buddha is giving actually in this uh, dhatu vibhanga sutta the buddha's approach is fairly unique now satipatthana sutta and anapana sati sutta actually have some similarities but in dhatu vibhanga sutta buddha has taken an entirely different approach to explain dhamma actually it is so beautiful and very uh, beautifully explain a vipassana approach entirely in a different perspective now has four foundations has four uh, what you call uh, <clears throat> uh, what you call uh, uh, resolves sort of determinations while being there one is working or practicing in order to purify one's mind so the first of all the first foundation buddha says is the foundation of wisdom so buddha's teaching or the buddha's uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, way of explanation we have to understand we have to listen to it and later we need to practice according to it so that this wisdom becomes our own wisdom In previously actually it is very much like a borrowed knowledge but later through our own practice we need to try our best to uh, make it our own wisdom not the buddha's wisdom but rather our own wisdom uh, brings up with our own practice now the first uh, foundation is called the foundation of wisdom because it is giving some information about the elements and then the vedana the feelings uh, so therefore uh this gives some explanation about so called person so called in- individual and this understanding helps us to eliminate so much of delusion so we typically have that so called the identification we think i am we think he is she is so likewise we have the the typical conventional uh, establishment but here according to the buddha's teaching as we practice so our whole view is simplified to six elements so they are in the consciousness element buddha explains it with respect to the feeling using the con- consciousness one one function of consciousness is to recognize various feelings how to differ 
happy feeling from a painful feeling how to distinguish happy feeling from a neutral feeling so this is the skill or the function of uh, consciousness so with respect to that buddha explained the consciousness and that is uh, using which we can recognize various feelings and uh, so the vedana upasana one can practice properly and as a result once uh, mindfulness is well developed clear comprehension well developed and one can establish well on the mindfulness so that while being there one can stand the one can one can understand or one can experience the all other mental and physical aspects say for example if you are being mindful you can observe various feelings as someone else's various feelings it is not your own painful feeling that i am going on suffering i am suffering why it happens to me so this kind of a wrong thinking will be eliminated and you now look at various feelings as feelings in other words we are looking at them objectively feeling is a feeling neutral feeling is a neutral feeling painful feeling is a painful feeling happy feeling is a happy feeling it has its own causes and conditions so likewise now we are in a position to disengage from feelings without identifying with them now we can look at various feelings objectively <clears throat> so this is actually showing us a kind of insight for us to how to disengage from feelings similarly how to disengage from bodily phenomena and look at them objectively and similarly how to disengage from mental objects thoughts and how to look at them objectively so this establishment is extremely crucial in our practice because otherwise we constantly identify with them we get absorbed to them we get uh, obsessed with them but if we are able to look at them objectively so that is one crucial aspect of our inside practice and then uh, buddha explains when you are pukusati that now you have to give up the absorptions or you don't need to attach to them because they have so many drawbacks now you have to plunge into the nothingness or the emptiness where there is no grasping there is no associations at all so mind has its own freedom so now buddha is turning his mind towards the uh, nibbana where there are no associations there are no attachments no grasping and fairly spacious the mind is free from defilements so buddha is turning his attention towards that direction and then uh uh after he encounter or he is able to uh, establish himself on the emptiness or the detachment on associated state of mind buddha says that is the truth that is the truth that you need to preserve everything else all the conditioned phenomena are subject to are subjected to constant arising and passing away constant change they are so impermanent they are subjected to this complete or con- constant transitions and you have no control at all so therefore they are not the truth if if you think any of they are true with respect to the current state in the next moment it may change otherwise so how are you going to cha- say so this is the truth because if it is true it has to be, it has to be true forever but if something is true only for a moment and in the next moment if it is changing to something else then you can't say the present one is the truth so therefore buddha says the whole condition experience is not the truth but if one is able to establish oneself on the unconditioned where there are no grasping where there are no clinging there are no attachments there is no self view so that is the proper state that one can say which is true so therefore this is not something extremely uh, far from us so when a vipassana yogi continues his practice time to time he may encounter this kind of a state suppose you are doing vedana upasana so if you are constantly look at various feelings objectively so slowly 
your mind is uh, enriched with very fair amount of insights so that actually helps us to have a proper understanding about feelings and as a result mind starts to disengage from various feelings now mind doesn't want to recognize with them now mind doesn't want to identify with them but now mind develops a certain skill to look at them objectively now mind has its the proper understanding if there is proper understanding available one definite result is to relinquish so sometimes we call as yatha bhuta jnana dasana when one has the yatha bhuta jnana dasana seen things as they truly are if one has this insight one definite result of that is to have the nibbida disenchantment and then the relinquishment so then mind become free so this freedom is something would the really appreciate and ask us to preserve it if you are able to release your mind free your mind only for a moment try to preserve it for another moment and if you are able to free your mind for 1 minute try to preserve it for 2 minutes so likewise buddha encourages us to enhance this freedom well to well establish on this freedom because this is the true state of mind and now one is developing that foundation and then later one has to cultivate this uh, relinquishment because we have so many identifications we have so many acquisitions possessions using which actually we define ourselves i am so and so i have this name i have this degree i have this education i have this house this is my uh, occupation this is my country they are my children this is my wealth this is my bank account this is my driving license so likewise we have so many parameters to define a so called person so with that we actually strengthen our self view the i so constant i making mind making happens through our mind because of the delusion now when it happens buddha asks us to penetrate that wrong view buddha asks us to penetrate that deluded view deluded thought and to relinquish it without identifying with it just to relinquish it and to again come back to that freedom so therefore this uh, foundation of relinquishment is to give up all these uh, acquisitions possessions mental identifications preconceived ideas deluded ideas so that again the mind become free as i mentioned it is not that we give up all the physical belongings all our family and then go to the forest rather when various thoughts are arising in connected with those uh, attachments in connection with those uh, possessions belongings at that very moment we have to recognize it as a deluded thought at that time we have to recognize it as a kind of a i making my making and at that very moment we have to relinquish that thought without encouraging it without getting deluded by it so therefore one has to uh, cultivate this kind of a relinquishment so that mind become more and more free and not only free then buddha is taking us to the fourth foundation now mind become peaceful there is nothing to attach nothing to corrupt the mind nothing to obsess the mind so fair amount of freedom spaciousness and entanglement is possible otherwise we constantly entangle with various uh, thoughts because we we think that they are my thought this i have to operate i have to react according to it so likewise we constantly get deluded but here if we are able to relinquish all those acquisitions through our from our mind and again uh, try to maintain that peace buddha asks us to train our mind to be in that peace so this is fairly important because buddha says that throughout this whole sansara we are constantly polluted by lust constantly affected by hatred constantly affected by delusion so how about at least at least in this very moment can we be free from hate delusion and lust so it's a kind of an invitation kind of an opening because so many eons our mind is corrupted polluted by these various defilements how about this life 
are we going to constantly uh, continue that practice are we still going to uh, sort of uh, become a victim of that defilements or are we able to at least momentarily free our mind from those defilements so that's why buddha is uh, encouraging us to free our mind from various defilements so then only the mind become peaceful when uh, mind is free from various defilements so then mind become peaceful that peace has to be trained more and more so so the four foundations therefore we can summarize here the first foundation is the foundation of wisdom that one should not neglect one has to be diligent in uh, uh, having that knowledge and to practice and to have and to make this knowledge or this wisdom as one's own knowledge one's own wisdom kind of a, kind of a meditative knowledge kind of insights so that one has to work hard to have it because it is not that you may gain merely by listening to dhamma merely by reading a book you have to have your practical uh, say work you have to really get involved with in the practice then only you are able to have its your own knowledge your own experiential meditative insight so for this buddha says don't get de- don't get delayed don't postpone it 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 requires certain amount of effort so therefore buddha encourage telling us don't neglect it panyang napamajjaya one has to be diligent vigilant in uh, having that knowledge having that wisdom then buddha says establish yourself on the truth and that has to be preserved and at the initial level it may appear like boring having no much taste but more and more if one is maintaining that state maintaining that free state then you may start to preserve it and then then there's a possibility of understanding the value of it and the foundation of relinquishment buddha says one has to cultivate because again and again this i make in mind making happens and as a result when such thing happen you have to be mindful about it and without getting deluded by it you have to relinquish it and then the peace the freedom from various defilements has to be trained so therefore a kind of a yogi's practice especially the vipassana yogi's practice is we can say is well defined or well established on these four foundations the foundation of wisdom foundation of truth foundation of relinquishment and the foundation of peace so assume that you are already uh, your mind is already peaceful there are no defilements then you have to preserve it you have to protect it and if it is again getting deluded you have to remove those defilements you have to relinquish those uh, attachments possessions acquisitions again you have to establish yourself on the wisdom so likewise these four foundations are interrelated they helping each other and uh, now we get into the last section where buddha says the types of conceiving do not sweep over one who stands upon these foundations when the types of conceiving no longer sweep over him he is called a sage at peace now buddha is taking us to a, another angle how to relinquish conceiving how to stop various consumments now if we come back to our mind time to time we have various thoughts various thoughts popping up with respect to various possessions various acquisitions various titles various status various skills and we are trying to define a self say for example suppose you uh, are skilled in music and you suppose you did a fairly good concert and now once you come back home so various thought various thoughts with respect to those related to those uh, activities may pops up in your mind again and again so you say oh i did it very nice oh it is very beautiful many people were there they all admired my skill they all admired my performance 
so always those kind of thoughts if you look at carefully has the root that is a i that is a person so this person went they are at to this concert and performed well so this person is a skillful person this person is a <clears throat> special person so you are making a person you are making an individual you are making an i with the help of these thoughts so this thinking is i centered so these thoughts actually makes an i so these thoughts gives you some kind of a strength towards as towards as an individual so more and more self identification self view i making mind making is strengthened so here buddha says i am is a conceiving asmiti manyita beta now actually this is a extremely a subtle aspect of the dhamma we are we are we need to look at when whenever there is even a subtle vitakka whenever there is even a, a very short uh, thought are we able to carefully scrutinize it and see is there a i involved there is there a self identification involved there is this thought tries to make a self is it is this thought contributes in making a person an individual an i is this thought promotes an i so this is a consumer if so it is a consumer so buddha says even if you think oh i am suppose you are going in front of the mirror and you can see the image and you see oh i am i am beautiful or oh, i am ugly i am old so this cloth is uh, not so relevant or good for this moment i am i don't appear well with this uh, cloth so likewise we are making a self image so the thought i am is coming up suppose you are getting a photograph immediately you are searching where i am suppose uh, suppose it's a group photograph if it is a group photo so immediately we are we are what you are trying to find is where i am where did i stand there where did i appear there so you are searching yourself so all these uh, thoughts actually promotes the notion of i so buddha says even the slightest thought i am is a conceivement is a conceiving and i am this is a conceiving so suppose you have sort of a kind of an idea so you say okay ah, i i i have this i have that i am this i am that all these i am this i am that has the i in in, in as the center those thoughts actually pops up while making i in the center so this is a conceiving i am this i am that is a conceiving even even for a for a spiritual uh, uh, accomplishment you can apply this suppose you are you are you are now giving up all the attachments you are able to give up all the sensual desires and you are able to attain certain jhana a very beautiful blissful experience and now you are absorbed in it so you are have now become that uh, concentration sign nothing else the whole world is given up but you have become that so i am that still i is there you are not free from self view you are not free from self self idea still the i am that is there so buddha says i am that i am this is a conceiving and then i shall be is a conceiving so suppose you are you are thinking about the future and centralizing the i you are projecting i shall be i will be and i shall not be i won't be there i won't be able to attend to that meeting so likewise even that kind of a thinking has the has the thought i included and then uh, when it comes to the rupa world the material world so you can say i am i have this body i have that body 
I look I looks beautiful, I looks pretty, I looks bad, I looks ugly ugly. So likewise, so much of various thoughts popping up, identifying identifying either forms, feelings, perceptions, various mental constructs, etc. So therefore, Buddha says this is a kind of a disease. This is a kind of a tumor. This is a kind of a dart. Manyitame manyitam bhikkhu rogo. Manyitam gandu. Manyitam salla. Now we need to carefully understand. So we we can't do it immediately. So you you have to have a fairly good understanding about the Dhamma. Fairly good establish on mindfulness. And fairly clear mind in order to recognize the dart here. In order to recognize the tumor here. Otherwise we, we seem to think... I mean, how can I think without having the I component? So likewise, it is very difficult to logically understand it unless you have well established yourself in Vipassana, well established yourself in the insights. So those insights actually helps us to understand the beauty here, the delusion here. And uh, these insights actually Buddha is further reinforcing and Buddha says, this all conceiving is a kind of a disease, is a dart, is a tumor. And uh, if one is able to overcome all these conceivings, then Buddha says he is a sage at peace. So this is nothing but the Arahant. The Arahant therefore is a sage at peace because he is entirely free from all these conceivings. Sabba manyitanan tveva bhikkhu samatikkama muni santoti vuchati. So, all the consumers, all the conceiving, one is able to relinquish, overcome, and then only the mind becomes extremely free, extremely peaceful. Otherwise, the tides are coming again and again, making a self. But the arahant is free from all these tides. Therefore, Buddha says, he is at peace. And uh, when there is no person, when there is no I, there is nothing to get born. And when there is nothing to get born, what is to get old? What is to get aged? And when there is nothing to get aged, what is to die? And when there is no death, nothing to be shaken. And therefore, beautifully, Buddha encourages here, for there, for there is nothing present in him by which he might be born. And when there is nothing to born, how, can, how could he die? How could he age? And when there is no dying, how could he be shaken? And not being shaken, why should be he yearn? yearn? So these are very beautiful arguments uh, Buddha is making here to relinquish this eye-making and mind-making and to have an extremely peaceful mind, free from conceiving, free from manjana. So, and now when Buddha is uh, teaching this whole sutta, all this explanation, all these uh, insights to Venerable Pukkusati, now Venerable Pukkusati understand, so this should be the teacher. This is not a typical person, this is not a typical man, but this should be the teacher on whom I have gone forth. This should be the Buddha. Now only he recognized this should be the Buddha. Actually so far Buddha never introduced him telling that I am the so I am the person. I am the I am the Buddha. I am the teacher. Buddha has never introduced him. But rather he taught the Dhamma and allowed Venerable Pukkisati to recognize the Buddha through the Dhamma. So this is a very beautiful aspect of the Buddha's teaching. Never go for any kind of an advertisement. Rather give the truth or give the teaching and allow the practitioner to recognize the Buddha through his own practice, through his own teaching. Because when Buddha's teaching is internalized, if one is trying to live according to it, when one is trying to uh, have one's own wisdom 
by practicing according to that teaching then only one would be able to properly clearly understand who is buddha so this is what happens here to venerable pukusati so with this beautiful teaching and his own wisdom now venerable pukusati is to recognize buddha through the teaching now he apologizes apologizes buddha telling bante i really didn't recognize you i didn't really understand this is my teacher so i simply used the term friend avuso so please please apologize me please forgive me so this request now venerable pukusati puts to the buddha <clears throat> then buddha actually apologized him forgiven him sorry forgive him and uh, buddha says another beautiful statement here for it is growth in the noble one's dis- discipline when one sees one's own fault one's own transgression and again one tries his best to purify oneself correct oneself according according to the dhamma and this is a growth this is a kind of a restraint in buddha's sasana in buddha's dispensation buddha hi sa bikku aryasa vinaye yo achchayan achcheto diswa yatha dhammam patikaroti i think sangvaram apanjati so you see your own fault as a fault so you have to be very honest very humble and then you go to the teacher and tell bante i did this mistake so please forgive me so this is a kind of a very honest apology is a very beautiful aspect of dhamma and there buddha says if one see one's own fault and tries to correct it so then the development is possible then the advancement is possible in this dhamma other than uh, uh, sort of hiding one's faults if one is able to reveal one's faults and to get the apology then actually helps one to correct oneself and to progress in dhamma and uh, then when once buddha mentioned that so when the pukusati was happy and uh, now he is asking higher ordination from the buddha now he is already he thinks that he is already a monk and he now wants to go forth and to get the higher ordination upasampada from the buddha and typically in order to give upasampada even today you have to have certain requisites three robes has to be complete the the single robe or the outer robe what you call the uttara sangha and the double robe that is the sangati and the antara vasaka the inner robe so these three robes is a must for a upasampada bhikkhu and the ball so the three robes and the ball are the must or the essential prerequisites in order to get higher ordination and when when the pukusati request higher ordination from the buddha then buddha ask whether are you complete on these uh, requisites then when the pukusati says no i am not so then buddha says it is impossible to give higher ordination without these uh, essential requisites and so buddha, once buddha informed that venerable pukusati pay respect to buddha and uh, went out in search of these requisites but unfortunately while in search of uh, these while searching these requisites he was uh, knocked by a, a, a stray cow and he was killed and this is how venerable pukusati pukusati passed away and later the monks get to know that buddha uh, alone approached venerable pukusati and preached dhamma only just one night and then venerable pukusati passed away and now certain monks are wondering what would be his next birth and so they approach buddha and they ask bante you went to this potter's house and you preached dhamma in short to venerable pukusati and he was killed later and what was his next birth and then buddha reveals telling that he is very intelligent he is very wise he didn't uh, ask so much questions but he was able to understand my teaching very quickly and he actually born in pure abodes 
as a anagami as a non returner so by relinquishing five fetters you know there are 10 fetters among those if one is able to completely uproot the first five fetters one would be reborn in the pure abodes as an anagami so with that note buddha concludes this uh, sermon this sutta and so i also like to conclude today's uh, dhamma sermon or the sutta teaching today and with that actually we conclude this whole dhatu vibhanga sutta so i like now to open the session for questions how oh, can jay sadu 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 what a wonderful sutta um so for all of you that may be new to this group uh you may ask a question directly by raising your hand or you may also send it to me via the chat okay no questions means that everybody understood everything <laughs> uh yes i think uh, someone has raised hand you can uh, unmute your mic and put the question mamdi can you hear me yes i can hear you uh my question uh, i uh, i have read this sutta one day and uh, i came into your teaching on it today so i might have missed some things but we all are striving to uh, reach some of these stages uh, while we walk on this path and uh, my question is really can i have some practical practical uh, day to day um, uh, um, you know this we can do to 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 reach this stage of a wisdom truth and really quishment uh, in order that we can go forward sure practical <clears throat> way in our daily life yeah you want it yes actually when i was delivering this uh, sutta teaching uh, actually now this is the ninth day actually we were discussing this sutta each section when i was explaining i tried my best to connect it with the dhamma uh, connect it with the practice so please uh, listen to those previous sermons or the sutta teachings as well everything is included to our website uh, so maybe jenny will uh, give you the directions where where it is uh, uploaded and uh, one i I'll, i'll give few kind of a summary here basically suppose uh, when we are telling uh, we consists of six elements so the first four elements pataviya apothejo vayo the earth element fire element water element and the air element so these i mean as you have correctly mentioned i mean just having this knowledge this have, through the through the uh, listening is not enough hmm? so we need to recognize these the the uh, the availability of these elements through our own practice say for example when you are doing walking meditation so whenever your foot is felt with roughness hardness heaviness lightness so this is this is an indication that the earth element is present whenever you encounter heat cold this is the indication that the operation of fire element is present and when there is wind when there is movement when there are vibrations so that is the function of air element and when it is something watery some something flowing is present as an indication the water element is present so likewise throughout throughout our practice so these uh, elements come to the front but immediately you may not be, we may not be able to recognize them because our mind is distracted so we need to Uh, first develop fair amount of uh, concentration and with that concentrated mind we would be able to clearly recognize the operation of or the presence of these elements and suppose uh, you do uh, sitting meditation first suppose you do some anapanasati and establish mindfulness and afterward probably you may be able to recognize various sensations throughout your body maybe itching sensation maybe say rubbing sensations may be movements vibrations uh heat cold so likewise so many uh, these characteristics may be available in the body so now we are looking at various characteristics or the element characteristics so later we will understand 
it is there is no person here there is no i here what is available is a constant consistent operation of elements because constantly what is available is the manifestation of various characteristics so you will define your whole experience in a different way understanding that what is available is a manifestation of these characteristics these uh, elements and it is common to inside world as well as to the outside world internally you understand what is available is nothing but four elements and externally also what uh, what is available is four elements so this is one aspect on the other hand when you do vedana anupassana suppose you are able to establish mindfulness and then you are able to observe various feelings arising in the body arising in the mind they are also you understand okay this is happiness this is uh, uh, pain this is uh, neutral feeling so likewise again and again whenever there are feelings available feelings arising you are able to recognize these feelings so as i mentioned even today so more you observe like this kind of a detachment arise so now you stop identification rather you are looking at these uh, feelings objectively so when happy feeling arise you are looking at it objectively it is a happy feeling when there is a painful feeling arise you are not identifying with it you are not trying to escape from it rather you recognize it as a, this is a painful feeling when there is a neutral feeling you are not ignoring it rather you recognize it oh this is a, a neutral feeling so likewise now the ability to recognize them objectively is possible as a result kind of a disengagement happen from the from this object from this feeling and the observing mind so this is how the establishment of mindfulness happens the growth happens and when enough wisdom is uh, grown so your mind automatically relinquish it because mind understand this engage in this experience or the grasping of this experience grasping of these various feelings is not necessary and it's a kind of a burden it's a kind of a suffering and it is not it is out of my control so why should i grasp why should i hold it why should i try to possess it so this question comes in the yogi's mind and as it as that wisdom matures and then the mind will simply relinquish and then mind become free so that is how the how these insights are operating practically in our own practice and uh, then you get established in that relinquishment in that freedom that non attached state of mind unbound state of mind so that has to be further cultivated that has to be protected and further enhanced so that is how buddha is approaching in this sutta how how one has to first uh, develop the wisdom as one's own experience and then how one's mind will be relinquished all these attachments graspings and then how to uh, preserve that uh, release state of mind and how to train one's mind to be in that peace by relinquishing all defilements and again to relinquish all acquisitions so likewise uh, buddha is uh, training us or giving us a path to free our mind and further at the last stage that is what we discussed today and even to refine the refine that relinquishment by understanding how these thoughts are popping up time to time sort of tempting us to make an identification creating an i making an i so if one is able to even recognize that even to penetrate that deluded thought then one would be able to remove those conceiving remove those manjana and then buddha says his mind is utterly peaceful extremely peaceful so that is the arhant's mind so likewise buddha is uh, stage by stage gradually taking us deeper in the practice in this sutta so please uh, listen to the previous sessions as well so actually i tried to connect the sutta teaching with the practice so you may be able to further get some connection with your own practice Thank you, Bante. I, um, I, um, that, that was very good. I, I do some of that that, that you mentioned. 
Um, just one other thing, if I may ask you, is that while we are doing this, um, while we are doing our meditation and we get into these samadhi levels and then we look at these elements as they come up and the feelings, um, can we then um, just try to relate it to Nama Rupa and... Uh, uh, and and to the um, arising and passing away and cause and effect uh, and the Patita Samupade or is that not uh, are we not yet ready to go into those things until we develop further yeah actually the Patita Samupada is included here say for example in when we are discussing uh, consciousness element so Buddha explains it with respect to the function of consciousness one important function of consciousness is to distinguish among various uh, feelings, the how to distinguish happy feeling, how to distinguish painful feeling. So likewise, clearly recognizing various feelings is one of the important functions of the consciousness. And they are, Buddha actually give the the the, the uh, theory of uh, Padisamupada. It is nothing but this causes that basically the 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 contact causes the feeling. So he beautifully gives a, a simile like uh, when there is a, a rubbing of two sticks. There's a heat generated. So this rubbing, this contact is causing to generate the heat. But if we keep them apart, so that, that generated heat will be dissipated. So similarly Buddha says, the contact causes feeling. So the important thing is Padichasamupada is not the simple memorization of those uh, 12 links, but the, the application of that theory, application of that uh, Arya Jnana, Arya Nyaya, they are, they are the noble theory. So this causes that, the contact causes feeling. So that, that penetrative knowledge is included here, it is not uh, omitted. So therefore uh, Padichasamupada is included in this teaching. And when one is uh, understanding various feelings, when one understands various, uh, say, uh, mental constructs, if one is able to understand Padisaupada there, the causality, then actually one is touching that aspect as well. Actually, the feel, uh, sorry, the elements are one aspect. And when, suppose one is uh, recognizing mental explorations, probably one would be able to understand how various mental uh, uh, say feelings are arising, how a happy feeling arise, how a painful feeling arise, how a neutral feeling arise in the mind. Because when the eye and I go and contact with the sight, when ear go and contact with the sound, so likewise Buddha is giving us a kind of a beautiful relationship to look at this causality. So therefore the Padisampada is included in this sutta and uh, so to answer your question, I think it is not uh, those teachings are omitted here. Those are also included and uh, going through elements is one way of uh, looking at Vipassana. But this is not the only method. So Vedana Vipassana is also included here. And again, when uh, one is able to establish one's mindfulness with respect to body and the feelings, then the clarity of mind is automatic. The clarity of mind is in evident. Sorry, sorry, evident. Uh, because clarity of mind arises when when you are relinquishing without identifying. So the thoughts are not going to the level of proliferation, and mind become more and more clear, calm, quiet. So the other aspects of Patisamupada, how avijja conditions sankhara, how sankhara conditions consciousness, how consciousness conditions nama rupa. So all these uh, other links will be able to recognize through one's own practice. So, uh, thank you, Bhante. Now, um, I, sometimes I'm I get a little worried because sometimes I uh, we are told that we have to actually experience these things uh, and not have th thoughts because thought is not to be personalized. Sure, definitely. Be personalized. Yeah. So sometimes we may, I, I, I think maybe I'm thinking uh, when I shouldn't be thinking. So that, that's where I want a little bit of uh, clarification. clarification. Thank clarification. you, Bhante. Yeah, Definitely. Actually, as you correctly mentioned, thinking is not vipassana. So, but at the beginning, 
we may have to think a little to understand with this teaching now even when we are teaching so you have to think a little you have to mentally sort of analyze so this is called the chinta menyana first we receive the teaching and that is the absorb the the learning part that is the sutta menyana and then we have to contemplate according to the teaching that is the chinta menyana so once we are con- convinced about the teaching then we are putting it to putting it into the practice so we are now trying to internalize the teaching so that is where the practice is involved then we uh, have our own understanding so then if our own understanding properly tallies with the buddha's teaching then we can be really happy because it is not now a kind of an external teaching now it is my own understanding it is my own experiential knowledge so that is why uh, at the beginning maybe a little bit of thinking is or uh, contemplative understanding is available but later the mind is completely calmed down so the inner chatter this monologue is completely calmed down and now one is uh, experiencing all these uh, aspects of the dhamma as i mentioned say when you are going through uh, the causality this uh, patisaupad so one's mind is utterly quiet mind is not thinking rather mind uh, observing how this conditionality operates and how the feelings and all these are arising and passing away it is not that we are trying to condition the mind but rather we are very carefully observing with a very quiet mind and then one is able to uh, have various insights thank you bante much merit to you i uh, i have understood that but thanks very much bante yeah. okay you're welcome Thank you, Bhante. Uh, there's quite a few questions, but I don't believe we have time um, since the next virtual retreat Q&A is starting in two minutes, Bhante. So I, no, I think, uh, Jennifer, the virtual retreat starts with the observation of Sela. I think this is in Singhala medium. This uh, uh-huh. uh, Priyanka Molligoda starts it today. And Bhante Dhammajeeva asked, was uh, requested to give Sela at 9 a.m. as far as I know. but right now it is oh. 8 am yes um i was told by kamal it was 8 am uh priyanka can you confirm priyanka you're on the line right okay uh okay oh. yes can you find say on starting at 9 am observing till at 9 am so oh great that means we've more time <laughs> okay Thank you. Um, so, Bunte, I don't know that we have any quick um questions here, but the next question is uh Bunte, please explain briefly the 10 fetters. Uh, <laughs> uh <clears throat> 10 fetters actually we discussed uh, in uh, Sabbasara Sutta the there are five fetters I mean say සක්කාය දිට්ඨි විචිකිච්ඡා සීලබ්බත පරාමාස ආද ත්‍රි ෆෙටර්ස් යු මයිට් හැව් සම් ෆැමිලිරිටි වි ආ ද සෝතාපන්න ද ස්ට්‍රීම් විනර් මේ බි ඒබල් ටු ඉරඩිකේට් ඇන්ඩ් දෙන් දෙර් ආ නදර් ටු කාමරාග පටිග සෝ දැට් ඉස් වට් දි අදර් ටු ෆෙටර්ස් ඕන්ලි ඇට් ද ලෙවල් ඔෆ් අනාගාමි නන් රිටර්න ලෙවල් වන් කැන් ඉරඩිකේට් ඇන්ඩ් දෙර් ආ නදර් ෆයි Uh, those are the sometimes called as the upper fetters upper half that ruparaga aruparaga mana uddacha avijja ruparaga is the attachment towards various uh, uh, say imati uh, sorry jhana level kind of a, a experience and aruparaga is the attachment towards uh, immaterial experiences mana is the conceit uddacha is the restlessness in one's mind avicca is the ignorance so those are called the upper fetters the uddham bhagya sanyojana so one can eradicate then that only by being an arahant so so when the bhukusati was able to eradicate first five fetters those are called the adho bhagya sorry uh, oram bhagya sanyojana and by eradicating those five one would be able to become an anagami Thank you Bunting. Um and the next question is from Sarah. 
Can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Eva, this is Radhika. I had to use my husband's computer because my con uh, computer was giving problems. So Sarah is my husband. So I just asked the question since um, you asked me. Um, Mantia, I wanted to ask about how uh, we have to be careful when we use conventional truth. So I have this, look at this example came up today when a respected one he asked me to write to uh, the organizers of the two day retreat and uh, thank them and give my feedback. Um, usually when I contact anyone, I don't tell what my title is or anything. I just sign my name. But I have found that if I contact uh, another temple, uh, try to make uh, a new Satipasala or I contact somebody to uh, promote Satipasala, when I just sign as a volunteer with my name, which is how, how I have done uh, for the whole of the last year without using my title or anything, that they just kind of ignore it and most of my emails to America and all, they just don't answer. But this time, <laughs> asked me typically to do it. I told what, you know, the my position and I was introduced myself because I was writing to an organization that I didn't know. So how do we avoid this um, in our day-to-day -day life when we have to work using a title or a position because if not we can't get the work done exactly so actually i 100 percent agree with you actually when i am sending an email i have to write who i am i am simply writing okay i am venerable chandaratana so and so so this is necessary because i mean we need to we, we should not confuse the conventional uh, operation or the conventional reality with the ultimate reality so when we are when we are dealing with other others for the communication, we have to use all these titles, all these designations, and names, labels, etc. No harm. But only thing is uh, that is done. Suppose, suppose you write an email and you did it properly. You indicated all the uh, titles and everything, and you thank them, whatever it is, and you completed it. Suppose that job is done. Now, suppose while now you are relaxing yourself, suppose there is another thought, a second thought arising in your mind. Oh, I did a beautiful writing. Oh, I did a beautiful uh, appreciation. I put my name there. I, I, it was, I mean, they have appreciated that they have returned me a, a nice uh, reply. So likewise, there's a thought arising in the mind making a self. Okay. So that is where the hitch. I mean, when we did something good with respect to that mm, good deed or good words or good thought by... Uh, attaching to that deed or word or thought, there's another second thought arising, may, trying to make a self, trying to confirm a self, trying to strengthen a self. So that is where the hook is. That is where we get wrong. So if we are able to continue or complete our task 100% properly and try to our best, there is no problem at all. But later, with, res yeah, with respect to that, what we didn't, if there are second thoughts arising and trying to confirm a self, so that is where we have to be careful. That is where we need to properly penetrate those thoughts. I mean, these are not necessary. I have done the job. So they have replied, fine, I did it properly. That's it. So after that, no, there is no not necessity. There is no necessity at all to make a self out of that task. Yeah. Thank you. That's very clear. That makes it much easier for me. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Bente. Uh, so the next question is, when we recognize I in the acquisition, then do we explore our rupa or sangha or sankara in that to uproot the acquisition? Uh, actually, if you are able to look at all those thoughts with respect to Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, so that's also fine. I mean, uh, so that is another sort of refined penetration happens in your uh, sort of practice. Uh, doesn't matter. I mean, whatever the way, what is uh, appealing to you, what is applicable to you, 
is all right now say for example there are thoughts arising in the mind so at that thought if the sanya the perception or the signs are prominent probably you can immediately recognize thoughts a perception sanya signs and you can understand okay these are simply signs they are not the real they are simply perceptions and you can simply discard them relinquish it on the other hand suppose there are uh, sort of uh, certain uh, element characteristics are there there are some uh, bodily uh, changes happen bodily sensations happen so instead of promoting the deluded thoughts you can come back to the body and recognize those uh, bodily sensations and then then those thinking patterns are not fed up they are not strengthened because your attention is drawn to the body say for example there are lustful thoughts arising in the mind but as a result there are certain bodily changes happen now you rather than promoting the lustful thought you draw your attention to the body and recognize those reactions and as a result those uh reactions may calm down and as a result the thoughts also will be faded away so on the other hand suppose when there are another say greed related thoughts are arising suppose you are thinking about kind of your wealth your bank account or whatever it is so the greed is arising so rather than going and get trapped in the conventional thinking if it is possible to understand though this is a greed this is a kind of a possessive thought so there we are penetrating so there we are come to the uh, sankhara likewise if you are able to i mean uh, it is dif- it is not possible to say that you have to specifically look at the rupa specifically look at the uh, say sanya specifically look at the sankhara time to time your mind may pick whatever it is among these uh, different uh, aggregates your mind may recognize whatever it is whatever prominent so the prominent one is enough so there you recognize the uh, various aggregates and it helps us to look at it objectively and to relinquish uh dear bente when one feels an unpleasant feeling for a certain length of time and mindfully experiences it as unpleasant feeling and then experience the same unpleasant feeling as a neutral feeling is there still myself self this is mine or have i abandoned myself temporarily at that time what i mean to ask is when one is able to contemplate even an unpleasant feeling as feeling 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 then it changes to a neutral feeling yeah certainly i mean it's a good question now when you are practically uh well establishing mindfulness i mean fair amount of i component is uh, temporarily subsided because uh, you are completely mindful and you know the object properly as you have mentioned there's a painful feeling and you are able to look at it objectively so this is a new uh, painful feeling so there are there is no i component it is not that i why i am suffering why this happened to me why poor me why it is not happening to others i am the one always suffering so that is the wrong way of thinking that is where the conceiving is there where, where there is an i available but on the other hand when you keep the mind quiet and if you are able to recognize painful feeling as a painful feeling that is the right way of understanding that is the proper mind establishment of mindfulness and the proper vedana anupassana and you are, have a quiet mind which is not thinking rather you recognize painful feeling as painful feeling and as a result it may start to diminish the pain may reduce and it may convert to a neutral feeling fine but suppose uh, so there is no i component involved you are done properly but on the other hand suppose now you going to write the um, say kamathan vartha this uh, report the report on the meditation so there are suppose there is a possibility of i making so i did it very properly it happened nicely today i am the one who did it to the 100% i can write a beautiful uh, successful uh, meditation report today now there is a possibility of i making yeah back to you jennifer thank you um i think nora 
Marsha, actually, you will be the last question for today. Uh, Radhika, did you want to make the announcement about the volunteer? Um, I just want to ask everyone if uh, anyone is interested in helping us out with the English magazine. The respect one day has asked us to introduce a Satipa Select English magazine. And um, Jamila and myself from uh, overseas. Jamila is from Australia, and I'm Radhika, and I'm from Canada. And Tarindu is uh, starting the project. So if you are interested in any way, either to give an article, a poem, to uh, submit the ones of the Satipas of the children, typesetting, proofreading, editing, anything, please contact us because we are really in need of uh, volunteers. Thank you so much. Sorry, uh, Jennifer. Oh. Uh, right, one second. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Can't Sorry, hear. did you say one second? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, we can Bante, hear. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Can I ask a question today, uh, Bante? Yes. Do you have time? Yeah, yeah I have time. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, Bante, as I was talk talking, uh, um, sorry, first I have to apologize, Jennifer and um, you, uh, for, you know, my internet got disconnected and there were some technical problems today. Right. Um, and I didn't know Jennifer was talking, uh, Jennifer fine, was fine. asking a question and I was reconnecting. Right. So, uh, apologies for that. Um, so, uh, you know, my, my, my main object, uh, primary object is uh, between the uh, present moment and when we do thin. When I do thin slices of time, when I was especially like doing the um, uh, walking meditation, or even day to day, uh, you know, being mindful of doing something, uh, if I consider the uh, what I'm what I'm collecting from the eye, so it becomes uh, just 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 pictures yeah. passing yeah. by. Yes. And when it comes to when I can when I can concentrate. Or focus on the ears at the same time doing the same thin slices of time it um, this the, the noises become just noises and it doesn't it, it is just meaningless and and also um, from the other senses like all the other five all the other five senses uh, I uh, uh, that happens in the five senses but I then I think about those those senses and I make all these together and to make this picture meaningful that's kind of a uh, uh, thought process came to my mind when I was doing these thin slices of time um, that is about the, the sensations that I'm collecting from these five senses plus the mano vinyane I believe um, and also uh, in another day uh, it's, it's maybe the same day and uh, it, it's it's the identification that I'm getting uh, those from those five senses as well as um, this mama vinyane and also I felt like you know what this is some if if when I do the, these thin slices of time when I put put my foot on you know on on, on the on the on the earth am I doing any intentional like chetana or something to make this foot as a foot um, I don't know if this is uh, the Tintamanyana uh, or Pratyakshanyana I need to figure that out but this is kind of uh, this is the the, the the feeling that I got from these three uh, uh, three, three uh, objects mean, means the, meaning the Vedana Sangha and I think the Sankara um, but also I feel like this the, the, the Rupa is the one I'm just seeing that's kind of a, am I mixing up something or yeah. is this, this is fine yeah Go actually ahead. you have mixing up so basically the whole body and the earth that comes under the Rupa <clears throat> it is not Rupa here what we see what we see yeah. also yeah. is one part of it so all the five senses, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, related to the rupa, and similarly the sight, sounds, 
uh, smells, touch, uh, taste, that also comes under the rupa. So the rupa aggregate, that is the rupa yeah. khanda, includes everything. And then the other four aggregates are related to the mind, the feelings. So that we get the happy feeling, neutral feeling, uh, say painful feeling. So that those are various feelings, feeling tones. So those are related to the mind. And then the the and the perceptions, various signs appear in the mind. So those are also in the mind, mind level. And then the sankhara, various mental formations, that's also related to the mind. And the consciousness. Say, when we see something through our eyes, so I and the form or I and the rupa, the sight are the physical aspect, but due to that contact, there's a knowing arise in the mind. So that's what we call as eye, eye consciousness. So this is how we recognize, this is how we distinguish uh, when, when there is a sight happens in our eyes, so there's an eye consciousness, there's a kind of a knowing arise. And when there is a sound uh, coincides with the, the, the ear, then the ear consciousness happens. So the, this is how we know that there's a sound. So this knowing part belongs to the mental aspect. So that is where the vijnana khanda, all with respect to and include in the mano vijnana as well. So when we look at these 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 things, it it becomes oh, oh, everything is just just thoughts. Uh, thoughts actually are much related to the sankhara, because uh, because thoughts. As thoughts, then there's a, there's a manif- there has to be a manifestation in the sure. mind. Suppose your mind is completely clean and silent. At that time, there's a possibility of sensations happen in your body. And you know it. So this knowing and a thought is different. You don't need a thought in order to know. Did you get the right. my, did you get my point? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Suppose you are you are you are, bit, yeah. so suppose you do walking meditation. So while you are walking, yeah. your body your body is walking. There are various sensations, but the mind could be completely quiet. So there are no thoughts at all in the mind, but the body is walking. You are feeling everything, but body the mind is quiet. No thoughts at all. So that that is possible. So that's why I mean that's why the Buddha properly sort of categorized these things. So the the physical aspects belong to the rupa khanda. So the feelings aspects are belonging to the feeling feeling aggregate, and various mental th- mental images, the perceptions that all belong to the sanya khanda. Sanya. Yeah, and then the sankhara has uh, some prominence in the thoughts. So when there is a happy thought, so rather there's a kind of it is not a feeling. It is not merely the uh, say the 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 uh, perception, but there's a kind of thought arising in the mind. You are, you are st- you start to construct. You are start to tell to yourself, oh, I feel really good. Oh, it's a beautiful day. There's a really sunny day. So there's a kind of a vitakka, kind of a appreciation, kind of appreciative thought. Vitakka arising in the mind. So this is where we do a little fabrication. Suppose you had a completely quiet mind and now you see a sun and now there's an appreciative thought arising in the mind. Oh, this, today is a sunny day. It's a beautiful, beautiful environment today. So these are kind of a little mental constructs arising in the mind. So that is where it comes to the Sankara Skanda. We don't stop at the sight level we don't stop at the ditte dittamattang rather we const- we 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 construct on top of that so then it is a san- then it is a sankhara yeah i see it that exactly I did that we, we we put our five cents to it we put our likes and dislikes to it and we start to think yeah. about it we start to comment yeah. we start to comment on it that's what I asked in the beginning. Like, if we, if I look at only the the, the sight, hearing, and the smell, and those sensations, it, it just it becomes just meaningless. And if we do the yeah, yeah, yeah. meaning meaningless in the sense your mind can be kept kept very quiet, and they are merely seen, merely heard. Mm-hmm. 
so that's what the buddha right. buddha telling to venerable ba here so in the seen there is merely seen in the heard there is merely heard and what is sense there is merely the sensed and only in the cognize what just merely the cognized and there is nothing to construct out of it there is nothing to fabricate out of it if you are able to maintain that quietude in the mind without doing any mental constructs without doing any fabrication then the mind is in a peace mind is at peace true seen is just seen thank you very much bhante yeah yeah much mr mr to you uh, jennifer can i do a little thing as well uh, i would like to second the uh, miss miss rajka's uh, uh, announcement if you are in if you are interested in uh, volunteering to satipasala about this e english e magazine please uh, send her an email it's it's uh, it's a very good uh, uh, contribution to this satipasala and we all appreciate any participation um, and volunteering thank you very much much metta to everybody yeah i think uh, thank you jennifer yeah i think jennifer we are now coming to the end of session hope we can wind up the session Yes, thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. So, thank you very much for your participation. There are some interesting questions, and uh, so we'll uh, share the merits and wind up the session. Itta vata cha amhe hi sambhatang punya sampadang sabbe deva anumodan tu sambh sabbati siddhya. Itta vata cha amhe hi sambhatang punya sampadang sabbe bhuta anumodan tu sabbh sampati siddhya. एतावता चमहे ही संबतं पुण्य संपदं सब्बे सत्ता अनुमोदं तु सब्ब संपत्ति सिद्धिया आकाशठा च बुम्मठा देवानागा महिद्दिका पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रखन्तु शासनं आकाशठा च बुम्मठा देवानागा महिद्दिका पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रखन्तु देशनं आकाशठा च बुम्मठा देवानागा महिद्दिका पुण्यंतं अनुमोदित्वा चिरं रखन्तु मम परं इदं वो ज्ञाते नं होतु सुकिता हुन्तु ज्ञातयो इदं वो ज्ञाते नं होतु सुकिता हुन्तु ज्ञातयो इदं वो ज्ञाते नं होतु सुकिता हुन्तु ज्ञातयो इमिना पुण्यकम्मे न मामे बाल समागमो सतं समागमो हो तो यावनिबान पत्तिया इमिना पुण्यकम्मे न मामे बाल समागमो सतं समागमो हो तो यावनिबान पत्तिया इमिना पुण्यकम्मे न मामे बाल समागमो सतं समागमो हो तो यावनिबान पत्तिया साधु 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 तेरवान सन्नाई